Welcome to Lost and Found. You're watching me, Matt, talk into a camera that I think is recording what I'm saying. I thought that for the entire day when my wife Yujin and I biked from our house in Dongtan to Incheon to buy our Korean bike passports. I have a degree in filmmaking, and I've been a freelance filmmaker for the last five years. But filming yourself is harder than it looks, okay? It's okay. The point of this channel isn't to be perfect. It's to be honest and to share what we are going through at every moment in our adventures, good or bad. Which for now, is exploring Korea until international travel gets easier. So let's talk about what it's like to bike in Korea with our journey to get our bike passports. Biking in Korea is so many things. It can't really be explained in one video. Korea is a developed nation, and it has its fair share of amazing bike roads that cross the entire country. Our home in Dongtan isn't connected to one of these roads. So we had to start our first 20 kilometers dealing with a lot of different obstacles. The journey started out with sidewalks that are made for both cyclists and pedestrians. Some of these are great, and some not so great. Although these sidewalks are clearly marked with separate sections for biking and walking, it's better to think of these as a free-for-all. Yes, it's chaotic, but the best way to handle it is to embrace the chaos and play the game of biking where the most space is, whether it be on the bike path or the walking path. Traffic lights in Korea take a long time, a really long time. If you can, try to plan your journey with the least amount of traffic lights. I can't stress how important this is. Also, you might ask why not just cycle on the road? A lot of Korea's roads are so narrow that there isn't enough space for cars and bikers to coexist. You'll get honked at a lot if the cars can't get past you, and Korea has so many delivery drivers that already deal with a really tough schedule. So I recommend only biking on the road if cars can still get around you somewhat easily. The quality and variety of roads varied immensely during the first 20 kilometers. We had to ride on a noisy highway, the busy streets near Suwon Station, through construction, and on old battered sidewalks that haven't been touched for tens of years. Although it's a lot slower than a dedicated bike path, we enjoy the unpredictable adventure of traveling through the city sometimes. Once we got to the bike path, we could turn off our GPS and just enjoy the ride for the next 60 kilometers. And speaking of GPS, there are three main options that you can choose from in Korea. Kakao Maps either heavily prioritizes bike paths, shortest distance, or ease of direction. It also gives you the elevation of your ride and where the hills are located. Naver Maps recommends a route that's balanced between bike paths and distance, but it doesn't show you elevation. And Strava allows you to create a route that can prioritize popularity or the least elevation gain. But in my experience, it recommends highways and other more dangerous routes too often to be used as your main navigation here. I would recommend Kakao Maps as the best overall, and Neighbor Maps if you are doing a lot of riding within the city, as it seems to get updated faster. We finally made it to the city limits of Seoul, and immediately noticed how many people there are compared to our home in Dongtan. When I lived in Seoul from 2014 to 2019, I was completely used to it, but now it's almost overwhelming. 
It was great to see everyone enjoying the cherry blossoms again though. We made it to the Han River, or Hangang, the main river running through Seoul. The wind had been blowing against us all day, and to no surprise it would continue to do so during the final 30 kilometers. Korea is a very windy country compared to my home in British Columbia, Canada. This has a huge effect on cycling, and can easily turn a flat journey into what feels like an uphill battle. We finally made it to the end of our ride for today, which is also the starting point when you bike the Four Rivers Path from Incheon to Busan. We entered the Ara Tower to pick up our bike passports. On the first floor there is a little vending machine that can be used to buy the passport. The bike passport is used to collect stamps from little booths located on every major bike path in Korea, and it even includes a map of all the routes. It costs about $4, and you can easily order it online, making our journey kind of meaningless, but you don't get to use the cool vending machine if you go that route. If you fill up the passport with all the stamps, you receive a Grand Slam medal that can be used as bragging rights when talking to other cyclists. Jokes aside, it's our goal to spend the next year filling up the passport and taking home the medal. Hopefully by then we'll be able to make our way into Japan on our bikes. Thanks for watching everyone! Thanks a lot for watching, and if you have any questions or comments about biking in Korea, please leave it down below, and we'll try to answer as soon as possible. If you want to support us, please subscribe to the channel, and like videos. Take care. Thank you guys. We promise the microphone will be working next week.